To Shanti, let me start with you looking at things on a macro level. You know, Shanti, um, the ADB has worked very closely with the public, private, and people sectors. Uh, I hope you can share with us some of the initiatives you are working on to foster closer collaborations with these three sectors. Shanti, the floor is yours. Shanti, if you could unmute your mic, please. Thank you, TJ, and thank you, Aria, uh, for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to join this forum today. Um, you know, partnerships and collaborations are at the heart of ADB's development work. So, you know, we often look at how we partner with our developing member countries as a finance plus plus model, where as a development bank, ADB provides funding to partner governments to tackle mm -hmm. development issues. But while at the same time, uh, we think about the partnership as a way of leveraging um, the plus of knowledge partnerships with ourselves and with other, other uh, entities, and also for more evidence-based policy formulation and so on, but also leveraging additional finance, financing and additional resources through partnerships. So it is. It, so it is very at, at, at the heart of how we how we operate. So maybe I can share some examples from the education sector group, which is where I work in terms of our projects and activities. And let me start with the role of the private sector first. You know, a significant a significant part of our um, portfolio in education is to do with skills development uh, for competitiveness and jobs. Uh, during the 2021-23 period, ADB's program has a program pipeline of about um, uh, six billion, uh, um, of which about 37% is for skills development. Um, skills we have skills development projects in over 25 countries in the Asia and Pacific region. And when we think about investing in in skills, uh, so, so we think about skills for jobs and jobs of the future. This obviously we cannot do this without collaboration with the private sector, since jobs are really created there and skills provided by training institutions have to be matched to the demand. Um, so ADB has a strong portfolio in, in, uh, in you know, technical and professional training. And when we design and plan these, we are very cognizant of the very rapid changes taking place in the, in the economic sector, sector and the tra uh, rapidly transforming labor market uh, lands, landscape. So when we invest to improve quality and delivery of training programs uh, in our partner countries, we look for, look for strong partnerships with the private sector. Some of the ways um, in which we bring in the role of the private sector is to promote, for instance, like the creation and strengthening of sector skills councils uh, with the participation of industry um, uh, by promoting enterprise-based training by encouraging industry participation in, um, in, the, in, in like curriculum development and the renewal of uh, courses in training institutions, for, in programs for faculty development that involve industry collaboration. And also by encouraging the participation of companies in apprenticeship programs and on the job training that uh, training institutions uh, can collaborate in. And in more recent times, we've also been helping to promote uh, business in incubation centers and innovation centers in training institutions to encourage students to pursue alternative pathways to, to jobs, to become entrepreneurs and to, to be innovators. So this is a recognition also of the growing um, startup culture and uh, the, the aspirations of the millennials and to really support the young people to explore uh, opportunities uh, in the region. So the private sector role is like, like critical to ensure that skills development is demand led and serves the interest of the economy in improving competitiveness and also to assist the economies um, to go up the value chain. And so in many of our partner countries, we support skills development programs and courses that actually serve uh, as uh, engines of economic growth. But as a development bank, we are also equally concerned with ensuring adequate policy environment to enable these initiatives to thrive and also benefit people. 
So for that, we uh, undertake dialogue with government partners, the public sector institutions to undertake uh, appropriate policy reforms and provide the enabling uh, environment in which these uh, private sectors can thrive, partnerships can thrive. So we have a suite of financial in uh, instruments uh, through which we, uh, you know, we can undertake this and by which we can encourage and ensure adequate policy development. Like for instance, we have policy-based loans where uh, the formulation of specific policies and enacting of certain laws and regulations uh, that are agreed as part of financing programs, which are critical to the success of the investment programs that we do. So we also have uh, in uh, financing instruments like results-based uh, funding, which help to ensure that policy is actually implemented on the ground and the results that are derived from, from the implementation of those policies are also tracked and understood. So those are all then link linked into a financing uh, arrangement that we make with, uh, with our government partners. Uh, so, uh, so a number of public institutions, including governance related institutions play a part in, in making this happen. Then come the matter of the interest of the people, particularly the disadvantaged and excluded. Uh, ADB has a very high priority attached to gender inclusion and it's a big corporate level priority for us, uh, for all our investments and all our projects and programs, which are put through the lens, lens of uh, gender equity assessment. So uh, our projects include gender action plans uh, and other instruments that help to improve opportunities for girls and women. And these are critical. These are seen as critical to the success of our projects. So success of the project is also measured by how well it, uh, it was implemented in favor of girls and women. So in addition, we also, at the beginning of the project design, we also undertake what's called an initial poverty and social assessment. We would develop a, 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 like a project specific strategy on, of poverty reduction and social strategy to guide the sort of equity invest, invest in interventions um, so that we can ensure that the project uh, benefits people, particularly from disadvantaged groups and vulnerable populations. So we, focus on girls, on youth, and on you know, uh, you know, remote people from remote locations and so on. So when needed, we also prepare like special plans for, for indigenous people if they happen to be in the project area. So we collaborate with our partners to ensure that adequate consultative mechanisms are in place to bring the voice of beneficiaries and project design. So, and, and like in education programs, we ensure that we incorporate scholarships and other equity features so that the opportunities are available more widely and, um, and they're also target people who are um, who may be otherwise ex excluded from the mainstream. So increasingly we see that uh, a key issue of equ equity is around digital capabilities and connectivity. This is, I mean, we are all aware that this has really been brought to the fore, to the foreground as a result of the uh, pandemic. So we've noted that you know there are several you know short-term collaborations that Telco partners have have done to provide zero-rated data for uh, plans for education because all education institutions closed down and everything moved online uh, so that you know to ensure that uh, those who lack connectivity can benefit from uh, education that completely moved online. So going forward, we see this as an important measure of equity and uh, you know ensuring connectivity and so on. So in the context of skills development, so we believe that digital skills will become very crucial to succeed in the workforce. That's why we have this number of uh, uh, you know, initiatives going to assess the implications of Industry 4.0 and skills for jobs and how to support these in collaboration with private sector, training partners, as well as uh, people's associations. Fully agree, fully agree. Yeah, thank you so much, Shanti. Um, and I think it's very important in, in the whole engagement process, like you shared, that there is um, policy discussions with the public sector. There is engagement discussions with the private sector to ensure relevancy. And then I think then like what you um, ended off sharing, uh, really reaching out to the people, you know, across different strata, whether it's rural, urban, whether it's um, the inequalities to ensure that you know everyone has the opportunity so thank you so much for your sharing um, 
in ADB and I think around the world, really, um, sustainable development and climate change uh, are issues that have been de deliberated upon. You know, uh, factored with those are also then your whole digital transformation, smart city development. You know, everything is coming together. Um, Shanti, from your work in the ADB, you know, can you share with us uh, what more needs to be done? Uh, whether you echo the same sentiments, but what more needs to be done uh, so that you know we can we can move all these agendas forward? Uh, thank you, um, thank you. Uh, I think this is um, uh, an uh, like really evolving area for the future, and uh, and uh, effective work in this area can really have like multiple benefits. Like, and the COP twenty six is like spotlighting issues around climate change and sustainability. Although this is uh, like a long standing debate, it's kind of putting a little bit more spotlight because of the uh, events um, coming up uh, this year. Uh, so, in fact, I would say that there are two mega trends that can be combined to create double wins. One is that, you know, the, the whole climate resilient development, and the other is digitalization. Actually, Chris spoke about smart cities, right? This is one perfect example of how these two mega trends can come together, like in a, in a fruitful way. Um, you know, the digitalization uh, can really also contribute to climate resilience in the sense of you know, reducing travel, reducing waste, and more, uh, and uh, is promoting circular economies, and, and also making things more effective and efficient. Uh, like things like digital learning, online learning, can expand the scope of opportunities for education for so many more people than is possible by just brick and mortar universities. So, you know, we have, in many countries, we have gross enrollment ratio of, uh, in higher education of 10%, 15%. I know now we have the possibility to scale it up, double it, triple it, uh, you, know, you know, with online and digital modalities. Um, uh, and and you, know, you, you made references to small and medium enterprises and hyper-local solutions. So localized development solutions um, can be such powerful tools for municipal coverage. So governments have a really important role to play so to set the tone, to enable technologies to to become affordable. For instance, how do like, you know, a small and medium enterprise may not have the capacity. So the, some, you know, solutions, some uh, incentives, some subsidies and so on. How to make technologies uh, more available. Like, you know, I come from India and India and China are known for their frugal innovation. And there are so many wonderful, ex uh, ex uh, wonderful stories of how um, this, you know, very uh, like bottom of the pyramid technologies, very affordable technologies have contributed to, you know, energy for like, you know, we're still energy efficient. We still have so many villages and places that are not electrified. So they've used technology so, so nicely to, to bring real development change happen. Uh, so governments have a very important role to play, but also our private sector in developing those um, you know, affordable uh, uh, products and services. So they both products and services both matter. Like, you know, increasingly consumers are becoming aware and, you know, they want more uh, sustainable products and services, things that are grown sustainably and so on. Uh, so that will drive uh, uh, private sector to produce those things. And governments can make, uh, you know, in, uh, the enabling environment to help with technologies. And on the on the people side, you know, greater awareness building. So COP26 is also stressing the importance of awareness around these things. And in ADB, you know, in the strategy 2030 is all about intersectoral collaboration. So we are instead of calling urban development, we're saying livable cities. How can we make solutions available to our uh, urban cities that make a life more comfortable and more rewarding for, for everybody? So, so these are some of the ways, I mean, you know, development partners also need to work with, you know, uh, actors on the ground, uh, education institutions have to play a part, um, develop new uh, ways of addressing these, uh, these, these things, making more hyper-local solutions, like you mentioned, uh, and private sector can really make the engine of growth happen through affordable, affordable products and services. Thank you so much, Shanti.